What's up, everybody? This is Carl from Techful Goodies, and today we are looking at the C-Star S30 Smart Telescope by ZWO. Now, when they contacted me and said, hey, would you like to try this out? I was absolutely excited because previously for my son's birthday, I had gotten him the S50, which is like a larger version. This is their newer, smaller version and we absolutely love it. So let me explain what this is. So this is basically like an observatory in your pocket, okay? This is a smart telescope that allows you to be able to hook to your phone, control it, and then do things like astrophotography, landscape photography, close-up photography, uh, videography of the stars, the moon, and stuff like that. So what I've been noticing is that astrophotography is becoming a lot more sort of uh, popular with people because it's becoming a bit more accessible. Now, when I wanted to purchase that for my son for his birthday, I went through the whole research process of thinking, okay, can I use my DSLR camera with a telescope and a setup and a auto gimbal and all this kind of stuff. And then I landed on the C-Star brand of stuff and I was absolutely excited for it. And the way that this works is it has an auto tracking gimbal inside of it. So with the app that you have as a starter base, and I'll show you all this in the app itself, but you can basically go through and sort of pick different things for the region that you're at and it will lock onto that object. And the reason it's like an auto gimbal type system is the fact that it will follow that specific star or planet or something in the sky and it will track it over time and it'll take a bunch of different photos and then it will overlay that because you can't see it with your naked eye, but what this does is it takes the light in from that object in the sky and then it will take multiple photos and then it'll kind of lay it over and give you a really crisp, bright picture of it. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick of what comes in the box here. So in the box, you do get a nice little carrying case. I'll show a quick picture here of the difference in size between the S50 and the S30. Um, this one is a lot more compact and a lot more easy to travel with. But in the travel case here, you do have the telescope itself. You, it comes with a tripod, some cables, your instruction manual, and it looks like, I think this is a solar filter. So if you wanted to take uh, daytime uh, pictures of the sun, it'll have a solar filter that allows you to be able to see some of the detail of that. So as you can see, the device here itself is so small and so compact. If you look at some of the other astrophotography setups, you have that giant telescope on a giant tripod, and then you have a camera hooked up to it. And if you also have the automatic tracking gimbal underneath it, it just makes it a giant pain to have to set all this stuff up. This is nothing more than screwing on the bottom of the tripod. And it's a nice sturdy tripod too, because you don't want to feel like this is going to have any issues standing up and then you're good to go. You're all set to go hook it up to your phone and start taking pictures. Now, let me just go over a couple of features here that I'm going to read off to you because I think they're very important. I mean, I'll get to the good stuff here in a minute uh, of actually trying this out, but I think you should know a couple of things that they've, they've really packed a lot of features in this and they're all important. So not to keep being redundant, but if you are like a beginner or even sort of an advanced uh, astrophotography telescope user, they put a lot of things in here to help you out. So for example, it does have a built-in filters for city stargazing. A lot of times if you're in the city like I am or outside the city, you'll have a lot of light pollution. So they have filters to try to get through that light pollution and get a picture of the nebular planet or whatever that you want. It does have a dual angle lens, which is actually under here. It is a telephoto and a wide angle lens. So what that means is that it allows you to not only take a pictures of the sky, but if you wanna take pictures of a building off in the distance or I don't know, the Statue of Liberty or in the Grand Canyon or something like that, it's good for that type of photography too. So it has a dual purpose. It does have the smart app for the automatic star finding, tracking and shooting. Like I had said, you just basically pick your coordinates or you search through, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit here, but you search through and find the thing you're looking for. It'll automatically know with GPS and tracking, it'll open up 
turn and go right at that object you're looking for. You don't have to manually center it. That's another thing that you have to do sometimes with the sort of manual astrophotography setups is that you have to find the object in the sky itself. This will automatically find it for you. And in order to find those objects, it does have a database of over 4,000 plus celestial objects. So when you're searching through with their app, you can actually pinpoint the, the item that you want. And like I said, it'll turn around and point right at it and you can start capturing right away. And again, with their mosaic mode, I had mentioned that what it does is it automatically tracks and locks onto that thing, tracks it across the sky, and it'll take multiple pictures, which automates that entire process of taking the photo of the thing that you want, overlays it, processes it, and makes it just crisp and clear for you to be able to see, even though you can't see it with your naked eye. And along with that, one of the things that it'll also do is denoise the image. I'm sure you've all used like a camera in a dark area. And when you take that photo, you'll get a lot of noise. Well, this is no different because you're taking a picture of a sky of something you can't even see. It's going to go ahead and denoise that image when it overlays it from their mosaic mode. And while I get this set up, I wanted to mention this does have an internal battery, so you can use it completely wireless. You don't have to have it plugged in. It'll last up to about six hours on one charge or four hours if you're using video mode. So that's very nice. Just take it outside, plop it down, uh, get it all leveled up and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and get this thing outside. It is light out, but I will get it outside tonight and we will get some good photos. Uh, I'll show you how the app works, how the arm works, um, and then we will see the result of it. Alrighty, so that didn't work out so well. I had a lot of problems this week, actually the past two weeks, with my weather. So it's been cold, rainy, snowy, overcast, and cloudy. So what that means is that if you have an overcast sky, you obviously can't take pictures of stars, the moons, and all that kind of stuff. And then if it's too cold, I mean, we were down below freezing. I don't want to have this outside in that sort of weather. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how this works from my desk. Then I'll show you some pictures I was able to take with the S30. Uh, even though it was cold, I wasn't able to film it. But this will be just a little bit easier so you can get a really good idea of how to use the app. And there's other things I want to show you that'll help you out in your journey. So first of all, let's go ahead and use the app. I'll go ahead and turn this on. Just hold the button on the front here. Once it's ready to connect to your phone, it will actually speak. Powering on, ready to connect. Powering on, ready to connect. So I'm going to hit connect here on the camera and connect. And what it essentially does is it creates a Wi-Fi connection between your phone and the telescope. So you can actually use this inside. The pictures I was able to get, the reason I didn't film it was because I could put this outside, go inside, sit in my kitchen, and actually take pictures from the warmth of inside my house. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and open the arm. And it's a little bit of a slow process here, but you can actually see it on the camera opening the arm. And then the next step will be to determine what you want to take a photo of. So like I had mentioned, there are two views or sort of uh, lenses on this camera. One is a wide angle and one is sort of like the deep space type of lens. So when you want to take a picture of something like the moon, it's just going to be one still picture. So you'll use the wide angle lens for that. And here's a picture of the moon that I was able to capture. I captured it at day and I also captured it at night. It'll autofocus and do all the stuff that you need to be able to capture that picture. And then there's also a sort of telephoto lens uh, that you use in with the app here. Uh, what it'll do is, like I said, it'll take pictures over time and overlay them and enhance it and all that kind of stuff and track the objects to the sky. So in the app, once your camera is hooked up and ready to go, you're going to want to click sky view. And what sky view does is it gives you an actual view of what, so they have like a virtual sky in the app itself. So you can pinpoint and find the things that you want to be able to shoot. So if I want to, I can go ahead and click, um, let me zoom out a little bit here so you can kind of see stuff. If I click compass, I can actually move this compass around and um, locate the things that I want to take a picture of. Typically, based on your visibility of where you're at, if you have a full visibility, then you can kind of look around and find out what you want to look at. And for me, I have a very small visibility between the trees and the houses, so I have to kind of go up here like this. When I'm looking around, once you click the screen, it'll disable the compass, and then you can kind of zoom in and find the things that you want to look at. Like, for example, if I wanted to come over here and take a picture of this star here, I can frame it within 
this red targeting reticle here. Once I do that, on the bottom of the screen, you'll say go to. Finding object. And it'll go through and find the object automatically for you. So basically you can see that this is now starting to sort of rotate and adjust to find exactly where the object is. And because I'm in the house, it won't actually identify. So what the camera will do is it will actually take a picture of what you're looking at and make sure that it's zoomed into or locked into the right spot. As you can see here on the screen, the scope and the target aren't particularly lined up. What it will do is it'll start to make minor adjustments to get right on that target that you picked. So if you pick something like a galaxy or a star, it'll zoom in on that. And once it's fully locked and ready to go, it'll start taking pictures. So you can kind of see it's starting to try to lock in on that. And I don't think it'll work inside the house, obviously, because it can't find that object. But what will happen is another screen will pop up. It'll show um, a record button on the bottom. And what it's doing is it's taking picture after picture after picture after picture after picture as it's going. Now, I let my picture sit for about 45 minutes as it recorded, but I know that my son has done it for as long as three hours. And like I said, because you can't see that with your naked eye, it's taking in that light. And what it's doing is it's reducing noise, it's enhancing, and it's overlaying. So it'll overlay 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 pictures to get the best clarity of that object that you're trying to record. Now, if you don't wanna use the compass to kind of find around and look for uh, objects in the sky, you can actually click to the top right here on objects. And what it'll do is it'll show you all the things around you that are the best, okay? So for example, I can take a picture of the moon, the sun, the planets, the comets, and stuff like that. Now remember, planets are very, very, very difficult to image, even with really, really good telescope systems. But you can go ahead and take those. You can look at galaxies, nebulas. Um, you can also look at tonight's bests. So what I like to do is go into the more setting here, and I can go down and look at all the things that I might want to take a picture of. Currently, they're all invisible because it's the middle of the day, but in the evening, when you're ready to take those shots, it'll show you what's visible and what angle they're currently at. So for me, I don't have a lot of visibility, like I said, so I'll pick something that has a 70 to 90 degree angle so I know it's kind of straight up above me. So that's what I did here. I took a picture of this nebula and I'll show the picture of it here. So I was able to capture this image, and this one I only let go about 45 minutes, but it really turned out nicely. And then when you're done, you just hit stop recording and it'll save it right to your camera roll and you're good to go. But that kind of shows you the power of the app and the way that it hooks up here. So I was able to basically sit in my kitchen and take those pictures without having to sit out in the freezing cold hours on end. And I think that's a huge benefit uh, to be able to use this telescope. So I wanted to show you a couple other things that I like to use as online tools to, to sort of supplement this. Now the app is awesome and it's got a lot of features, but I like to take a look ahead of time and kind of plan out what I want to take a picture of. So the first online tool I wanted to show you was Clear Outside. So it's clearoutside.com. I'll leave a link down below to it. And what this allows you to do is put in your town or your postcode and find your location and it'll show you when is a good time for photographing the sky. So let's take a look. So like tonight on Saturday the 8th, I it's all red. And that means when it's red like this, that means that that's clouds and there's no good uh, sort of visibility into the sky. So what I'll do is kind of look down here to the 9th, to the 10th, to the 11th, 12th, etc., and I can see, okay, on Monday at 1800 hours, I should be able to get out there 17, 18, 1900 hours. I should be able to get out and potentially take some photos. But this is a really good way to know ahead of time whether or not the sky is gonna be clear enough for you to be able to get out and take some good pictures. And as you can see here, I just don't have a lot of good weather in the upcoming couple of weeks. Um, and the windows are very small to be, for me to be able to get out there. So, but that gives me that ability, like I said, to pre-plan. So the other thing that I like to look at is this little program here called Stellarium Web. Now, both of the apps that I'm showing you online also have an app for your phone if you wanna download those and get those. I like to get them online, but what I like to do is it'll go based on your location. You can do the same thing that you would do in the app, which is kind of look around the sky and see what's going to be available for shooting at the time that you are available to shoot. So you can actually come down to the bottom here, pop this up and kind of pick, okay, I'm gonna say, let's go to eight o'clock. So eight o'clock tonight, I can see that in the sky, here are the things that I'm able to shoot. I'm, if I wanna shoot the moon, I can. 
um, I can come in here and look at some of these different, uh, if I'm, I'm zooming in here, um, the circles are actual clusters. I think that's the one that I had taken a picture of before, but you can kind of look around and see what's gonna be available. And once you find what's available, okay, so let's say I wanted to take a picture tonight of this, NGC 1976-682, um, I can go ahead and take a note of that. If I wanna come into this uh, coal car cluster, I can do that. And what I'm doing is sort of writing down things that I want to be able to look at in the evening. Then you can use the app, do a search through all the items in their database, find it, and then just go ahead straight to it and start taking your photos. So these aren't necessary. The app is absolutely a great app um, and I've enjoyed using it a lot, but this kind of allows you from the sort of comfort of your computer or inside your house to kind of plan ahead, figure out what night is gonna be clear and figure out what's gonna be in the sky at that time. And for me, like I can kind of look here, let me zoom back out and I can see, okay, south, doesn't work for me, but east works for me because the way my backyard is set up, south is covered by trees, east is open and up is open. So I can come east and I can kind of come up here and I can see, yep, that moon would be available. If I zoom in, I can see, okay, what's over here? This cluster, uh, Messier 35 is gonna be available. NGC 2158 is gonna be available. So that's a great way to sort of plan ahead. So I hope all that helped you out. This really is an amazing device, especially for uh, beginners and people who are just getting into astrophotography and regular photography too. My son and I have both loved using it. And now with this much smaller size, it's gonna be so much easier to travel with. We go on cruises, we go on a trip to see our family in Arizona, we go all over the place. So those are definitely opportunities to get pictures of things in the sky that I normally couldn't get from the East Coast. If I'm on the West Coast, I'll have a little bit different view. I have much more open area there. So it's I love the fact that I can do that. But if this helped you out, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'd love to see you back. But until next time, this is Carl from Techful Goodies, and I'm out.